Welcome back to the rest of the story. Well, I'm going to answer a simple question. Why do farmers keep doing what we're doing when we're not making a decent living at doing it? Well, a decent living as far as, I guess, being able to afford your lifestyle? Well, I'm sure I can't answer it. Well, my answer isn't going to be a good enough answer for everybody. But it's good enough for me, so that's all that really matters. Simply put, the reason that I keep doing what we're doing, even though the profit isn't as good as it was a few years ago, um, I was born to do this. I was born to be a farmer. Uh, it takes a lot of determination, a lot of stubbornness to do this. If somebody had gotten into farming at the height of agriculture, back when we were seeing these high five, six, seven, eight dollar corn prices that thought they were going to get in and get rich quick, I can almost guarantee you that a lot of those guys are no longer in agriculture because prices started to plummet and they did it rather quickly when they did, that they got out of it because they realized that the fun times aren't there anymore. Well, when it comes to farming, Anybody that has done it for a long period of time understands that agriculture, in whatever area you're in, dairy, crops, cattle, um, well, whatever else is across the country that we don't quite do, mulche, cotton, wheat, but the good times last probably not even half as much as the the down times um, there's a lot of hardship in farming and people that don't understand that are usually the first ones to say go find a job that'll make you your your income make you a decent living I simply refuse to do that yes when it comes to just farming to just doing agriculture just doing cattle just doing crops it's a hard go of it right now. It's not easy. But the first thing I will tell anybody, which even myself, I have, did not take this advice until the last 12 to 16 months, you got to diversify. You can't you can't solely grain farm for the next 50 years and not expect to have hard times, lean times, a lack of cash. Uh, I farmed for the first couple years of my life where all I did was cattle, which is okay, but the problem is you get into a couple bad years, and when you're only raising cattle, it doesn't really take a whole lot of bad years. One really poor year, I'm trying to keep from getting too explicit here, um, can completely wipe you out. Well, I had my knees knocked out from under me by raising just cattle. I had no other sources of income coming in. Uh, it's a really good eye-opener. And if you can persevere and survive through that, it makes you a smarter person. It makes you a smarter farmer. Um, I am diverse. I am... Let, let me count just off the top of my head. Um, I got... Well, farming in general. Crops, cattle. We'll label those as two. Other than just crops and cattle, I have, well, I actually have three other sources of, I'm going to call them investments that I'm currently in, involved in, that if I have to, I can fall back on and at least survive, pay my monthly bills, pay for the fuel in my truck, well, afford to take my wife out to dinner every once in a while when I have to, which I don't have to, Brittany, if you're watching, you know, I, that's great. But um, being diverse, having something else to fall back on is really important in agriculture. I was told, somebody had recommended to me, that because prices are down in crops, that we should be focusing more on cattle. That I should um, dump all of our rented ground, because it is hard to cash flow rented ground right now, unless the landowner is, owner is really understanding. Um, the recommendation was to cut down on the amount of corn and beans we raise, plant more hay, 
dump all of our rented ground, which, no, that's not even a realistic option for us, for me, for Ryan, and focus on raising cattle. Raise more hay and increase your cow herd. Well, what my grandpa has told me over the years is that guys that jumped in and out of all these different businesses weren't around for very long. An example, guys that were heavy into raising cattle and crops went up, they dumped all their cattle, they went to crops. Well, by about the time that they got situated in raising grain crops, dairy came up. And dairy, or not dairy, um, hogs came up. And they jumped from, from crops to dairy to hogs to whatever else comes up to, to beef again. Um, guys that just didn't sit still, that were insistent that they were going to constantly chase the money. That's kind of hard to do in agriculture. Because dairy, especially, well, hogs too. I have no experience in hogs, so I'm not really going to speak too much about, uh, about what it takes to get into them. But when it comes to dairy, you can't just, even for us, we have a dairy barn that with a bit of work, I mean, it would take a lot of convincing to get me to have milk in that barn again. I don't think you could get me milk in that barn again. It, it'd take a lot of convincing. By the time you actually got a dairy herd going, got all your equipment set up, got your dairy cows around, got them into lactation, you know, calving, unless you're going to put out the money to buy uh, milking cows, which is another different expense altogether. I mean, there's different ways you can get into dairy, but you're looking at, I'd say at minimum two to three years to really be running at full capacity doing dairy. Maybe that's kind of high, but with how big these operations have to be anymore to, to cash flow, I don't see how you could justify just jumping in and out of dairy, which is what somebody had recommended to me that we should just jump out of grain crops, which, which is what somebody had recommended to me, getting out of corn and beans and focusing more on raising corn and alfalfa to, to focus on cattle. Well, I can tell you right now, by the time I did that, and I mean, cattle aren't anything to really brag at, by the time we did that, get all the hay planted, put all the money into raising hay, and get our cow herd built up, usually doesn't fail. Corn and beans would go back up. Cattle would drop, maybe not plummet, but they wouldn't be as lucrative as cash flowing out, going back to, hey, let's go back to cash cropping corn and beans. That's where I'm at. That's where my family's at. That's where Ryan's at. We're not going to just just jump out of raising corn and beans. I am still actively looking for crop ground. I'm still looking to rent ground. Sounds kind of silly. Why would I do it? But you can cash flow it if you can get it rented for a decent price and it's decent ground. I am in this for the long haul. I'm sure there are a lot of guys out there that agree with me. I mean, like the video if you agree with me. I, ref I simply refuse to go get a 9 to 5 job. We we have control of our lives. Um, we can work as hard as we want. We can work as long as we want. If I have to take a day off and go go to town with Brittany, um, I can take a vacation. I, can, I mean, there's no reason. There's three of us here. There's no reason any of us can't jump in the car and leave for a week. I mean, the farm would still operate. That is something that I refuse to give up. I'm independent. We're all independent as far as what we can do around here, what gets done on the farm. Farm work, the amount of work that gets done is dictated by how hard you're willing to work. And the problem is, is that my grandpa, he only left the farm once. He went to Arkansas for a four or five day trip. That was the highlight of his life. Well... The world's bigger than that. Um, I kind of get off topic. I understand that. But when it comes to, to farming and you work a 9-to-5 job, comparing a 9-to-5 job to farming, if Ryan wants to take off for a week, if Dad wants to take off for a week, the only person he has to talk to is me or Ryan or Ryan and Dad. I'll back up 
anything that needs to be done around here, they'll do the same for me. Try doing that in a 9-to-5 job and saying that, hey, I'm going to leave for a week or two. Bye. It's not that simple. Um, I have a sign. It says, I was born to be a farmer hanging in my office. I believe that. I know without a doubt from when I was a kid that I wanted to be a farmer. Without a doubt. I was born to be a farmer. I was raised to be a farmer. I'm bullheaded as a farmer. I got my grandpa's attitude, my grandpa's stubbornness. I get told that all the time, but it's not going away. Um, times are tough. I've been kicked in the face a few times as far as life lessons. I've probably gotten more than my fair share of life lessons. Has not turned me away from farming. Not in the least. To be quite honest with you, I'm looking forward to raising crops again this year. I'm looking forward to going back to field work, going back to planting, watching my crops grow, selling them for a profit or selling them at a loss. I can tell you right now, I just checked the corn prices and I can lock in our corn and soybeans above break even. I'm not going to do that yet because it's January and I'm optimistic. Yes, I'm a farmer. I'm a forever optimist. If the day comes that a farmer is stops being optimistic is the day that a farmer needs to cash out and go move to town because that's a that's a freight train ride to depression you got to be able to live with a lot of stress being a farmer i live with stress every day we all do it comes with the territory but you gotta love it i can't i can't really explain it said so, so somebody wouldn't just tear me apart saying that it's just ridiculous as to why I would keep doing this to myself. Farmers, you got to be a special kind of stupid, according to the general public, to want to do this. And I tell you what, you can get me into a fist fight telling me that farming is a dead-end career, that you're better off doing something else. You want a pretty violent response out of me? If not necessarily a physical response, but you want to get me ornery really quick. So start telling me that I need to start looking at getting off the farm and going and getting a 9 to 5 job. It won't go over very well. But, I know, I you guys didn't really need a rant. But I do believe in farming. I believe in what I'm doing. I'm only 28 years old. i got a long career ahead of me. So I'm willing to fight, I'm more than willing to fight to, to be a farmer, to do this, to keep doing this. Um, something you probably don't hear all that much on YouTube. Maybe you do. See, I don't watch a whole lot of other farmer channels. I kind of bounce around in and out between different channels. But I know, without a doubt, for us, I will do whatever it takes to keep our farming operation going. I believe my dad and brother are the same way. And um, my grandpa really, really expected these farms to keep going after he died. Um, that's a big reason why we got these farms. Grandpa knew the options. It was either they get sold off and sent out to the highest bidder, or he sold them to us and Ryan and I, his grandkids and made damn certain that these farms are going to be around for a long time. I want to make damn certain that that happens. So, that's enough for that. I thank anybody that stayed around for 14 minutes of ranting. Yes, I swore a little bit. YouTube's probably going to frown upon that, but I get a little, uh, I get a little irritated when people try to tell me I should go do something else other than what I love. <laughs> I love farming, if you guys can't tell. So, with that, take care, take it easy, keep in touch, talk to you guys later.